Welcome ladies and gentlemen to the Status Report Highlight for the 7th of November 2017. I'm your host Septic Falcon and this week we have Brian remembering the struggles he experienced during his modding days and looking forward to how the Daisy standalone modding will make things a lot easier. Eugen is providing a thorough recap of our recent progress, we're introducing our scripter Boris Fecula and his work on particle effects. And right at the bottom of the status report, as always, you'll find the community spotlight where Beatty is announcing the winners of the Halloween screenshot contest. So, without further ado, let's get into this with creative director Brian Hicks, who says, As we approach the entry into the beta phase of Daisy's development, I am reminded of how things were back in 2012, as we worked on the original Survivor games, working with Dean to get us early access to upcoming builds of Daisy mod, and trying to modify the script codebase to match the project's needs. Much like many mod authors back in the day, it was a frustrating experience trying to create our experience within a framework, Armour 2 scripting code commands, that was simply not designed for the type of experience we were trying to create. It is experiences like this that specifically has me so excited for what we'll be able to offer mod authors with DayZ. The project benefits so much from being developed in-house by Bohemia Interactive. Doing this on an in-house technology is such a rare opportunity in the grand scheme of things. For both us as developers, mod authors, and you all as passionate advocates of survival in a post-apocalyptic world, it means a technology base that is designed nearly from the ground up to provide the tools needed to create the experience we've all had our eyes on from day one. From a more modern and robust animation system offering true layered animations, being able to move and perform an action at the same time, to a renderer better designed for the large distances and huge amounts of enterable structures and objects drawn at one time, to a more robust and performance conscious scripting language, making sure that when Daisy leaves principal development and the early access program that it provides people in the tradition of all Bohemia titles with tools to tell their own stories is 100% key. Another thing I wanted to discuss briefly was Daisy's survival mechanics, both in gameplay systems and in economy values. I've often received shouts of dismay from both sides of the fence, things being too easy and being too hard. Looking at the mechanics we have on the survival side, something we've struggled with often as developers is providing an immersive, sometimes punishingly so, sandbox that has systems that don't frustrate. Paying attention to feedback has been critical, and I don't think we've quite hit the mark just yet with this. Far too often players are forced to manage survival simulation mechanics while trying to engage in the true draw of DayZ, the player interactions, rather than the survival mechanics serving as a method to drive and give agency to the player interaction. In addition to this, the idea of an economy of scarcity should give said agency to players engaging and interacting with each other, but far too frequently, it ends up being a drive to either completely avoid players or to just destroy them on sight. <clears throat> or if you're me, make them sing Mary Had a Little Lamb. I truly hope that as we move into beta and begin to see mechanics that give players more of an option and feel of having an impact on the world, that we see the core game loop expand past loot, shoot, survive, as my most memorable experiences in gaming all come from those types of interactions with DayZ and DayZ Mod. To achieve this, however, we need more than passionate developers. We need to hear from you all, constructive and engaging feedback on the systems and mechanics of DayZ that either drive or hinder player interaction is key. And I hope you all will engage in this more often as we move into beta, utilize our official forums, open tickets in the feedback tracker, Hell, even post on Reddit and tag Beatty. This is as much your game as it is ours. Hicks finishes up by saying, I was asked by my partner once, if you could only play one game for the rest of your life, what would it be? I'll be honest, I thought pretty damn hard on this one, but I am proud to say that my answer was a confident DayZ. And I hope to still be playing DayZ years from now, allowing people to tell their own stories and paint the world with their own brush will help make this a reality. Now let's move on to lead producer Eugen who starts by saying, I'm going to change things up before we continue on our intentions and goals for release. We want to prepare detailed information in a digestible format as far as content and features go that will be available from the get-go in the first 0.63 experimental and beta. I'm excited about how we can communicate with you in the future. Today I will focus on things we are currently dealing with. As far as an internal version goes and its recent development, I do believe it's important to share the steps we are taking to complete this amazing gameplay experience that is so specific to DayZ as a game. Details are crucial in getting things right, and as I said multiple times already, there is only one way out of this, having a good game. Before we get into the summary, I'd like to point out we have released a security update on our 0.62 experimental branch. I know it might not seem that important to test, but on the contrary, 
is very much so. To increase the incentive on playing experimental servers, we have been discussing the possibility of making some small changes to how the game behaves, making it more interesting to switch between the branches and find a little bit of relief before the release of beta. All ideas are welcome, and I'll be happy to look into any feedback provided. From a gameplay standpoint, our focus is still on the player features that you might have seen in the DayZ player diagram a couple of status reports ago. The main issue we are still very much focused on is the fix for the rapid zigzag movement in PvP combat. We want to have a solution that is both visually appealing and on point when it comes to gameplay. Additionally, we are looking into more tweaks regarding how the player camera behaves and experimentation with its new features. Besides that, there are two major things coming to internal client that haven't been available in the Gamescom demo just this month. One being prone ranged combat with proper turning on the back as you move around with your weapon. And second, the expansion on melee combat in the form of evades and blocking mechanics. Be aware that things can always change, but we are happy to start working with these as they get playtested properly. I'm hopeful we can show some early prototypes soon and share the progress on these specific features as we progress further with their implementation. From a content standpoint, there has been a couple of sound recordings done and more work on polish of the data gathered, as well as implementation of specific features that will enable us to fill the game with cues and sounds in the right situations. It's a crucial stepping stone for bringing atmosphere and tension into moments and stories you'll experience in the world of Chernerus. Sound is not the only content we are working heavily on, as our firearms team continues to implement one firearm from our list roughly every two weeks, the list of beta weapons should be covering various firearms across weapon types, their specific uses, their overall quality, and more. We expect some changes to the pace of implementation as we add in more complicated firearm mechanics, but we are very happy with how things are going right now, and we will feel comfortable finalizing and sharing the list with you pretty soon. Oh yeah! In the meantime, artists are looking into all old assets used in-game and reworking them into the condition that is fit for the year 2017, and also fit for the options that we now have regarding the new renderer. Bringing the visual appeal of Cherneris into this century is the main goal here, as Daisy, while still being pretty good looking overall, is certainly lacking some of the more up-to-date finesse in certain places. Speaking of Cherneris, work on tourist trails is ongoing, and I can't be more excited after seeing the first internal results. It adds tons of flavour to an already interesting world. Adam will share more when we get closer to a final-ish state. And last but not least, as always, our concern is performance and stability, and we are going through bugs as they get introduced with new content or features. It's not something we take lightly. As you can see, we are trying to cover a lot of things that this game needs in order to introduce the critical changes all of us want to see. And finally this week, let's see what scripter Boris has to say. This is my first status report, so let me quickly write something about myself. I joined the DayZ dev team as a member of the Bratislava studio three years ago, since then, I worked as a scripter designer and I wrote various systems, both on SQF and in Force Tech. Today, I would like to show you what I am currently working on in regards to firearms mechanics. Thanks to the new infusion technology, scripters now have better ways to handle particle effects. One of the features that heavily relies on the system are weapon muzzle flashes. In DayZ 0.63 and onward, all firearms will shoot unique particle effects depending on various parameters, such as ammo type fired, weapon type used, muzzle attachments used, suppressors, compensators, muzzle brakes or flash hiders, and the damage state of any of these components. In addition to that, particles can now be generated coming from multiple parts of the weapon. So for example, in addition to seeing typical muzzle flash coming from the rifle's muzzle, you will also see a patch of smoke escaping from the ejector, or if some specific muzzle break is present, the flash will form a star shape. Internally, we're currently at the beginning of creating particle effects for each weapon type and muzzle attachment configuration. This will be a long-term continuous process that will require a lot of tweaking to get right. However, we already have a few rough prototypes that you are seeing on screen now. This system will be fully moddable, and with a few simple tweaks, content creators will be able to achieve quite wild results. And there we are, ladies and gentlemen, the status report for the 7th of November, 2017. As always, don't forget to check out the Community Spotlight for those Halloween winners, and to read the status report in full for yourselves for all that juicy information. Hit that like button and thank you for subscribing, and I'll see you peeps next time.